Hej och välkomna till dagens presentation med uh, Oh sorry, I'm going to do it, uh, it in English. Uh, hello and welcome to today's presentation of Swipe by CEO Andre Lövestam. Uh, Andre will present for around 20 minutes and then we might have time for a few questions afterwards. Go ahead Andre. Thank you very much, uh, Magnus. Uh, I'm now sharing the presentation. I hope you can see it. Yes. So, um, excellent. So, uh, I have the pri uh, privilege to uh, present uh, Zwipe to you today, um, a Norwegian fintech company with a mission statement of making convenience safe and secure. And this obviously means that um, we are focusing on the payments uh, segment and we are combining the convenience of contactless payment with the security of biometrics in order to eliminate virtually the need for pin codes, thereby offering consumers a really um, quick and easy uh, way to um, conduct their uh, payments. Uh, we are addressing a huge uh, market, uh, about 4 billion uh, units uh, per year. And as I will come back to, I feel that uh, it's all coming together now uh, for the market to really uh, take off. Uh, first of all, on the supply side, the technology advances are bringing about uh, radical cost uh, reductions on the on the unit price. And on the demand side, uh, COVID-19 is causing a shift in uh, payment habits, which is driving uh, contactless payment and also uh, increasing significantly the uh, demand for truly contact-free transactions, which is exactly what biometrics can offer. So uh, here you have uh, our flagship product, the Swipe Pay One uh, solution. Um, in a biometric payment card, there are two critical components. First of all, the secure element, um, which uh, in our case is uh, placed uh, behind the ISO contact plate uh, module. So this um, uh, chip that you can see in the top left uh, corner. Uh, and uh, the secure element will perform all the biometric uh, matching and authentication, as well as um, energy harvesting, power management, and, and more. And the second uh, critical component is, of course, the fingerprint sensor, which will capture the fingerprint image uh, of the cardholder. And um, we can deliver all the deliverables to, uh, to create a biometric uh, payment card to uh, card manufacturers. So our business model is basically that we buy various components from uh, electronic suppliers, fingerprint suppliers. We build our own unique uh, and proprietary solutions uh, around that. And then we offer that to card manufacturers who will then laminate the cards. They will uh, personalize them and then they will sell them on to banks who issue them to, to card holders uh, like you and me. Uh, Zwipe has uh, pioneered uh, this um, field uh, for years and we are positioned for cost and technology leadership within uh, biometric uh, payments uh, and we have the most widely piloted solution in the market uh, featuring in 12 out of a total of 21 uh, announced uh, pilots so far. I will just give you a couple of highlights from uh, our um, uh, last uh, funding and um, and first half results, and then I will give a general presentation of Swipe. So first of all, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Swipe successfully raised 96 million kroners in a private placement, representing 25% uh, of the uh, share capital in the company. Um, this uh, private placement was uh, strongly oversubscribed already at launch. Uh, thanks to very strong participation from primary insiders and from Swipe's largest existing shareholder and also from global high quality institutional uh, investors uh, from Sweden as well as uh, London and, and New York. I have received um, clearance to disclose the names of the two largest investors in the uh, private placement. And those are um, Vasastaden, a highly uh, successful and well-recognized family office in Sweden, and Maven, which is a London-based uh, fund 
with uh, 200 employees and uh, billions of dollars in, in management. And we are, of course, very grateful and honored that these investors and thousands of other investors are placing their trust in us. Um, um, and um, I believe that we are now approaching uh, somewhere between seven and 8,000 investors in total. Um, and we work every day to ensure that um, we can deliver value creation for our shareholders, large and small. The significance of uh, this fundraise uh, is, of course, that Swipe is now funded through commercial launches in 2021 and beyond, um, based on current plans and market assumptions. And this effectively eliminates the financing risk for uh, Swipe, while at the same time significantly strengthening our ownership structure, which are two major pain points that we have now addressed and solved. And we're extremely pleased about that. So just a few uh, pointers on the half year results. Uh, first of all, uh, our total revenues uh, ended at uh, 880,000 Norwegian kroners, about $100,000 uh, with very strong growth. Um, we are of course practically pre-revenue, but this growth signals that the, there is a lot of increased activity under the bonnet. A lot of our um, customers are now ramping up to prepare for uh, mass volume uh, deployment uh, from next year, engaging with us, uh, doing uh, preparations on the, on the production side, and, and this is what is reflected in the revenues. Um, when it comes to our cost side, we announced in November last year to reduce our underlying operating expenses by 40% from uh, 2019. And um, this is exactly what we delivered in the first half year, a 40% reduction down to a cost of just under 5 million kroners per month in the second uh, quarter. Um, and um, this actually is despite an 8% negative uh, currency effect. Of course, this excludes a one-off that we also have uh, a third out of four uh, co-investments with uh, IDEMIA into the Swipe Pay One platform that I will come back to. Our cash balance uh, at the end of the first half year was 43.2 million. And after the period, uh, we have also already received 10 million kroners from the EU Horizon program, uh, which is a grant. Uh, and also we will receive in the fourth quarter, 5 million from uh, Norwegian state uh, grant, Skattefun. And on top of that, we have the 96 million uh, from the private placement. So, um, in terms of highlights for 2020, uh, we've had a very active year, starting with our listing on NASDAQ First North and then having quite a lot of uh, news flow. In our interim reports, we have always emphasized our strong pipeline and subsequently delivered strong news flow. And what I can tell you today is that our pipeline is stronger and more potent than it has ever been and therefore we are going into the fourth quarter with a lot of excitement and um, expectation. So let me uh, then uh, go into a more general uh, introduction of Swipe. Uh, this is the investment uh, case uh, for Swipe uh, summarized in eight points. First of all, we're addressing a huge uh, market characterized by growth from innovation. Uh, secondly, we are reaching now the mass market price inflection point, which uh, according to industry consensus is $10. And we are positioned for technology and cost leadership uh, based on uh, our exclusive global rights to a disruptive technology that I will get back to, which is part of our, our technology partnership with IDEMIA. We also have a strong IP portfolio. We are taking a unique end-to-end -end systems integrator approach and a trusted advisor role to our customers, which is very uh, valued by our customers and it's helping us to gain a lot of traction in the marketplace. And we are now seeing soaring demand due to COVID-19 uh, with also high consumer willingness to pay. The um, uh, customer base that we have is fast growing. It has uh, global coverage and we also have a very lean and scalable business model that's ready for growth. And, and to take good care of all these opportunities, 
we now also have a very strong management and board in place. So let me go quickly through each and every one of these points. First of all, we're addressing uh, five, uh, sorry, four billion um, unit market uh, per year. So there are about four billion uh, smart cards being issued each year within uh, payments. And on top of that comes, of course, wearables, fobs, and other payment uh, mechanisms that we're also addressing. Uh, this market has been driven by innovation. In 1995, uh, the um, chip and pin card was uh, was launched, uh, introducing a totally new level of uh, security and also demanding that uh, the whole infrastructure of payment terminals had to be re renewed. Uh, for that card, the chip and pin card, it took 18 years before it reached uh, a, a volume of uh, 1 billion cards per year. Then at the end of 2007, contactless cards were launched. First by Barclays in uh, the UK. Again, the uh, payment uh, terminal infrastructure had to be completely um, renewed in order to support contactless payments. Um, and um, the price of these cards were about five times the price of the chip and pin cards when they were launched. And despite all that, due to the very strong convenience benefits that were introduced, this card actually used only eight years to uh, reach a, bi a billion uh, unit per year volume. Uh, and now comes the next big wave within uh, payment cards, and that is, of course, uh, biometric uh, payment cards. It's uh, driven, of course, a lot by a need for even greater uh, convenience with uh, with uh, contactless, which is booming now uh, due to COVID-19. And of course, there's also a need for increased security um, as you have more and more uh, contactless. But on top of that, due to COVID-19, the big, big driver will probably be hygiene. I believe that COVID-19 is actually a game changer for uh, biometric uh, payment. So um, let me then uh, go to the next slide, which has to do with um, uh, the price inflection point of $10 uh, being in sight. Uh, as I've explained earlier, there are three kind of, what should I call them, um, different avenues or generations of um, biometric payment cards that are currently being uh, pursued at the same time. So first of all, you have uh, to the left uh, the discrete components on an active inlay where you have lots of components mounted on, a, on, on an inlay. Uh, due to all kinds of factors, this becomes a very expensive uh, card priced at 30 to 45 dollars. Then you have on the, in the middle there uh, system in package solution which um, means that a lot of the components are actually assembled into one big module which can be mounted on the inlay and uh, due to component integration and, and simplification the cost can effectively be halved down to some twenty dollars but the ultimate level of component integration and consolidation is the single silicon meaning that all the functionality is actually combined into one single chip and this is the solution that uh, we are focusing on together with our technology partner, uh, Idemia, and where we are firmly on track to deliver radical cost reductions um, in this uh, marketplace. And the reasons for that is, first of all, that the, the BOM, the, the bill of materials, is dramatically reduced because there's only one single um, chip, right? And secondly, it doesn't need to be uh, mounted on the inlay at all. It can be post placed after lamination of the card by being placed behind the ISO contact plate, which is always post placed on uh, on payment cards. Uh, and third, the inlay is it's in, in itself is very inexpensive because it doesn't need to carry any technology. And uh, because it, there is such uh, simplicity, the card lamination itself can be done using all the standard production equipment and production, pr production procedures, using hot lamination where you put a lot of pressure and high temperature and speed 
so it's scalable. And when you sum up all this, you come to an extremely uh, competitive price. So um, we can reach down to below $10 pricing to the issuer, meaning, of course, that the cost is um, si significantly below that because we have countered in the margins in, in the whole uh, value chain there. And um, over time, as the market grows even further, the uh, costs will be able or uh, to come down even further, uh, reaching down to prices of cards in the $5 range. As I said, we are positioned for cost and technology leadership thanks to the partnership we have with uh, IDEMIA. Uh, we are co-investing in this uh, technology uh, development. And the whole point is that uh, Zwipe is retaining worldwide exclusive distribution rights for the lifetime of this product to all manufacturers of payment cards, wearables, and other uh, payment solutions, except to IDEMIA themselves. So um, we effectively are the only uh, source of supply of this solution to about 75, 70 to 75% of the market. IDEMIA will retain the IP ownership to the chip. They will use it in their own cards sold to their own um, financial institution customers. Uh, but uh, because we have this exclusivity, that is the same as having the IP ownership to about three uh, quarters of the marketplace. The cornerstones for uh, Swipe's competitive position are twofold. First of all, it is built on technology cost and performance leadership. So we are going to bring to the market the first of its kind solution with a single chip solution uh, with low costs, uh, superior uh, energy efficiency and biometric performance, uh, but we are combining that with our value-added trusted advisor role. We're taking an end-to-end -end systems integrator role towards the marketplace because we have the, 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 and we are building an ecosystem where we are supporting our customers from end to end. And we have now become so completely end to end that we are not only focusing on helping our customers to reach the state of production readiness, meaning that we're supporting them in choice of materials, choice of suppliers, choice of equipment, etc. But we're actually also focusing on getting them to the state of sales readiness towards their customers. So this involves our work on the so-called pull strategy, whereby we are actually addressing our customers' customers in order to create demand and to support our customers in that uh, process. And we have met with tremendous uh, response um, in this area. And I must say, the reaction that we're getting from banks is night and day compared to what it was a year ago. The same goes for the consumers. Um, the uh, demand for um, biometric payment for truly contact-free payment is soaring. Uh, and uh, we believe, of course, this is driven by, um, by COVID-19. Um, and here on this slide, you see some, uh, some uh, statistics from a small-scale survey that we did in, in Norway uh, only uh, some weeks ago, where you can see at the bottom there, that 84% of consumers say that they want their next bank card to be a biometric payment card. And even more significantly, 55% of consumers say that they want to pay a monthly fee uh, in order to have a biometric payment card. And in the top right corner there, you see that one third out of these 55% are actually willing to pay an amount of 75 kroners or more uh, per month, meaning 900 kroners per year in order to have a biometric payment card. And nobody actually gave an amount of less than 38 kroners uh, per month. So I think this is extremely ex significant because when you compare that to the prices of a biometric payment card, it clearly shows that banks are actually now able to not only address the needs of their consumers and the concerns of their consumers in terms of hygiene, in terms of security, in terms of convenience, but they are also 
able to do this in a profitable way. They can open up a completely new um, source of revenues and generate uh, profits uh, at the same time. And then also this uh, last number, 64% is very significant because 64% actually say that they would switch banks to have a safer and more secure way to pay. And, and to me, that suggests that uh, once this snowboard ball starts rolling so that one bank or two banks start launching these cards, others will feel that they have to respond. So that's why I believe that this will actually be um, uh, an ever accelerating uh, journey and um, it will see some, uh, some exponential growth uh, going forward. Like I said, we have a fast growing customer net network uh, with uh, global coverage already. We are engaging with more than 40 out of the top 50 card manufacturers uh, in the world, uh, of which we have already announced um, collaborations and partnerships with 17 partners, uh, out of which five came in the first half uh, year. And of course, in our strong pipeline, we have more. So you can expect uh, this um, uh, customer network to, to, to grow over time. And the good thing is that um, during our iterations with these customers, we get confirmations every day that we're on the right track, we're doing the right things, we have the right offering. So we're really very, very encouraged by that. We also have a very lean and scalable business model. Um, our medium term uh, financial aspirations is to reach an annual revenue of uh, 1 billion uh, based on uh, market share of around 30%. Uh, there are many predictions as to how fast this market will grow. Um, so what I've done here is to um, list the, the very most conservative one, which is the Swedish analyst firm Redeye that covers uh, uh, Zwipe, and which has recently suggested um, that uh, the market will have around 100 million uh, biometric payment cards by 2024, and with very uh, high uh, annual growth rates uh, from there. Uh, there are uh, also other um, projections, for example, from Edgar Dunn & Company, from Good Intelligence, both London-based, uh, which have uh, six to eight times higher projections. And uh, I personally believe that um, uh, Red Eye's uh, projection is on the conservative side, uh, especially now after uh, COVID-19 and after we have a firm and very clear route to um, the $10 uh, uh, tipping point. So uh, our ASP, average selling price, is uh, targeted to be in the three to four dollar range as a weighted average of the deliverables uh, that we can have for a uh, biometric payment card or wearable. Uh, and we expect to have uh, very healthy gross margins. And the reason for that is that our main competition is in the semiconductor industry, which tra traditionally enjoys margins in the 40% plus range. And we don't expect, we don't see any reason why any of these players should want to undercut uh, that kind of a, a level, especially not in an emerging market like biometric payments. Like I said, you know, we have a very scalable business model with uh, low operating expenses, and therefore we're targeting an EBITDA margin of 20% uh, rising further with volumes, and we have uh, estimated a cash flow break even of around 6 million units per year. Uh, and when you compare that to the, um, the potential in the market, you see that it is actually uh, fairly or very low level compared to the potential. And once we go beyond there with strong margins, we will have um, very strong EBTA margin growth. Our monthly cash um, uh, and flow and, and spending is according to, to plan as uh, we have communicated. And then uh, finally, uh, I want to highlight that we really have a very strong, dedicated, passionate management team with a deep understanding of the entire ecosystem, the industry, the technology, and our company. And um, I'm really proud of this team. 
and uh, also of our board, which uh, complements the strengths of our management team and carries with them a lot of experience from uh, all kinds of industries, both semiconductor industry, biometrics industry, financial industry, and so on. So I think that we are really well equipped to take care of uh, the opportunity that we're facing, uh, summarized in these uh, eight bullet points. And um, this means that, um, as I see it, we are, we are really poised for uh, value creation for our customers, for uh, society in general, and most importantly, for our shareholders. So thanks, um, Magnus, over to you. Thank you, Andre. Right. A very, very thorough, thorough presentation, presentation as, as usual. usual. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, we won't have time for any questions now, now. but uh, uh, I think you covered it all. Okay, well, in that case, thank you for uh, having me. I was um, very pleased to, to join Pensadagen. Yeah. Thank you a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.